Ahoy, and welcome to It's Always Sunny in Hollywood and our 100th episode. <coughs> I am your host, Patrick, joined by my co-hosts. Please introduce yourselves. I'm uh, Lugia, and I, I should have brought some confetti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you buy that just for this episode? No, I had this. Okay. I had this. I have a kazoo somewhere, but I don't... Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy for making... What is your name? You never introduced yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, the award goes to Red Drum Arts. Um, I'd like to thank the Academy for making, like, maybe, maybe one of the movies that we talked about. Honestly, we have not talked about, like, any Oscar winners, now that I think about it. Um, I mean, when you say Oscar winners, you mean like Best Picture? Uh, we've yeah. talked about Palm d'Or winners. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of Palm d'Or winners, which is kind of relevant because uh, Cannes just happened, and I was going to talk about that for a second. Cannes is the festival where the Palm d'Or is given. But yeah. You want to just jump right into that? Sure. Why not? Uh, Luke, did Lugia introduce himself though? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. Um, so Cannes uh, Film Festival happened, and uh. You know, that's uh, basically the international kind of film festival where um, compared to, like, other films, uh, compared to, like, say, the Oscars, which is more localized. But anyway, the two real uh, noticeable uh, headlines I've been hearing coming from Cannes has been the response to the new Martin Scorsese movie and the response to the new Indiana Jones movie. Uh, the Indiana Jones movie apparently had a five-minute standing ovation, which sounds good, but uh, the people at Cannes are insane. Um, so five is actually a bad standing ovation. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, critics have not been very kind to it. Um, apparently, it's a time travel movie, which is... Uh, it is? Yeah, and the one that's really funny, huh. in the behind-the-scenes for a Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you know, the Indiana Jones movie that people think is bad, George Lucas said that um, he made it about the Crystal Skulls because he wanted to be sci-fi, but, he thought, but it, he thought it needed to be something like something somewhat grounded and it was like the crystal skulls are real aliens are you know somewhat believable so it was like like i'm never gonna he specifically mentioned that he would never do time travel because time travel is too stupid for indiana jones and i was like <laughs> that is so funny that they went with the rejected idea oops yeah i, I think guess. it's because um from what i've seen in the trailers they have like de-aged technology so i think they wanted at one point to have like young harrison ford and that's why they did it. And I was like, oh, that's such like a bad idea. And I was like, yeah. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, it's not looking good. Uh, I was kind of looking forward to it just because um, the director is James Mangold, who I think is actually uh, pretty good. He made uh, Girl Interrupted, Walk the Line, 310 to Yuma, um, Ford v. Ferrari. And probably his most famous movie is Logan. And I was like, well, if he was able to, you know, do a good send off to... um you know, Wolverine, he was probably able to do a good send-off to Indiana Jones, but guess not. Also, there's already, like, two other send-offs to Indiana Jones. It's really funny. This is a five-movie franchise, and uh, three of the movies were meant to be finales. Um, anyway, the one last bit of news is just, uh, I saw Gardens of the Galaxy 3 on a Tuesday, and, um, uh, I loved it. Um, so Gardens of the Galaxy are, like, my favorite movies in the MCU to begin with. Um, and I think this is the best one. So uh, basically, I'm saying this is the best MCU movie. He's always a filmmaker that really liked, uh, kind of clicked with me, clicked with my sensibilities. So um, yeah, uh, and I feel like this kind of leans into the best aspects of the first film, and the second. Uh, it leans into all of his best aspects while also like it's like a real tight like ending. Like he gives everyone a really strong character arc and it wraps up, and it's probably like the most creative. Um, the jokes are. Uh, a bit more understated, but they all, like, the ones that are there, like, all land. So, like, I, I'd highly recommend it. If you've never seen, um, it, also, the the best thing about the Guardians of the Galaxy movie is that uh, you don't need to see any of the MCU films to understand the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, because they're entirely standalone. So, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy series is basically a self-contained trilogy within this massive franchise, which is kind of funny. I um, was, um, curious about that, considering what happened to Gamora in Endgame. Yeah, so they actually do address it, and it's a really interesting arc, especially because apparently that was, like, something that blindsided James Gunn, because um, that was a choice they made, you know, after he was fired. So, like, when he got it, he basically got saddled with something that he did not agree to. Um, but he made it work really well. Um, also, if you haven't 
uh, to any viewers that haven't seen Endgame or Infinity War, they explain like everything in between. In fact, uh, you don't even need to see the holiday special. You just need to see the three movies. They it catches you up to speed on everything, so y you won't be confused. You know, I saw it with, yeah. So um, highly recommend Guardians of the Galaxy three. Easily my favorite. It's the only MCU movie I'd actually say is like a nine out of ten. Um, and now for the uh other movie that made Disney a bunch of money, no, uh, the other director that makes Disney a bunch of money. Actually, before we jump to that, it is episode one hundred, is it not? Yes. yes. Yes, I would do the, the kazoo thing again, but I put it down. Anyway, before we actually jump into the movie, I just wanted to ask you guys some questions regarding the podcast. Okay. So, start off, what is your favorite movie we've talked about so far? Ooh, okay. Like, um... in terms of, like, how do I explain this? So, episodes or movies? Movies. What is your favorite movie we've discussed? That might go to Pulp Fiction for me personally. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one because there's a lot of movies I give like a 10 that we watched. Yeah. Um, I mean, there I were mean, also a lot of movies that we saw that I never did and they were pleasant surprises. So I'm going to say The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly mo just purely because like it's been like my favorite, one of my favorite movies for like most of my life. Like this was, this was like my favorite movie since I was a kid. So like, yeah. So I guess that one stands out. Um, I don't know, like Night of the Hunter and the Mood for Love, Rocky, Pulp Fiction is actually one of them. Yeah, Pulp Fiction is one of my favorites. Like I'd say, um, like I'm I'm actually looking at my list, and I I, I generally think I've given like twenty six of the movies we've watched a ten out of ten. Granted, one of them is Fateful Finding, so maybe yeah, so actually twenty five. <laughs> so out of the hundred movies we watched, I thought twenty five of them were ten out of ten masterpieces. So. Uh, that's one fourth, so I think that's a good track record. What about you, Patrick? Me? Um, I'd have to say either Jaws or Pleasantville, actually, because Pleasantville, Pleasantville for me is it's it's a bit of a nostalgia. It's a bit of nostalgia, but also there's just I think that movie has so much going for it, from the technical aspect to the commentary, performances. It's it's funny. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Pleasantville. Yeah. Pleasantville really does it. It's one of my favorites. And Jaws, like, I, I told you guys, that's a movie for years I never watched, but I was well aware of its cultural impact, of course. And finally seeing it, and especially seeing it on the big screen, yeah, it is such an experience. It is, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think it's a damn near perfect film. No, I think it is, like, a perfect film. Like, it's, um, I, I would honestly argue it's probably, like, Spielberg's like, best film. Like, I like Catch Me If You Can and Jurassic Park, like, just a smidge more, but they're, like, all tens. Now, how about in the opposite direction? Actually, the I think... Worst movie? Yeah, I think I know what your answer is, Patrick. Your assumption is correct. <laughs> I, I did not like Silent Hill Revelation. It's not even that I hated it, I nothinged it. <laughs> it left no uh, impression on me. Honestly, I, I guess, like, Riley re Rewind? Like, I remember, like, because here's the thing, like, Romeo and Juliet, it's bad, but, you know, there was some passion to it. Furry Vengeance, it's bad, but there's, like, a, a goofy, in, a kind of sincere goofiness to it, I can rock with. Silent Hill, um, okay, I don't have, like, anything nice to say about Silent Hill, but, like, at least it, it was, ju it was just, like, a nothing film. Riley Rewind is actively, like, like, I think it's, like, actively kind of, like, repugnant, just because, like, well, I guess it's it's really pick your poison. Would you rather be bored or would you rather be disgusted? Yeah, because like I'm watching like Riley Rewind and I'm like, seriously, like a this is how you're gonna like talk about suicide and like school shootings and shit like that and like that's the conclusion. It's like this is so such a weird movie, man. Well, what's going on? Um, also like I don't think like Disaster is like a bad movie or something, but like I, it, something about it just like didn't like didn't click with me. I don't know. The Firm is the one movie where, like, I kind of feel nothing about it, but also just, like, I, I, I just don't like The Firm, and, um, yeah, I don't know, like, why, but I just don't I, like it. I could, say, that... I could say um, Suburban Nights, but at the same time, like, I had stuff to say about it. Yeah. Like, it was, it was kind of fun to riff on it. Suburban yeah. Nights was definitely the worst viewing experience I had, but part of that was because, um, if if you guys don't remember, I was like generally like had a fever and I was like bedridden watching when we were watching that, so I was like in active physical pain. 
And then I watched that, so I had like the mental pain going on at the same time. What about you, Lugia? I guess Worst I would movie. say Suburban Nights. Um, trying to think of what else. Not who. Who was a weird one? Who was who, kind who? of like the nothing one for me? Hey, come on. Who? Who's the best movie ever made? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, who was just like a weird Disney movie? Like it's not, it doesn't like, there's nothing actively bad about it. Hoot, hoot. Okay, I know I I joke about hoot. Hoot is my Morbius. It's a movie with like nothing to it, but it's it's so basic and vanilla that I just love hyping it up. Um. So what do you, was like the most like surprising film to you? Like a film that like you like either knew nothing about or you were like or you were, and oh, were, like, that's an easy one for me. Red but Rock West. Surprised by how much you liked. I would say Blowout. Blowout, and what was you? Uh, what did you say? Red Rock West. That Red film Rock caught West me completely I, by surprise. I never heard of Red Rock Rock West. And Nor I have like, I. Really fucking good. Mm hmm. One of these days, like I, I want to recommend the Coen Brothers' first movie, Blood Simple, because it's like really similar to Red Rock West. And um, I know like you guys uh have been a bit more mixed on the Coens than I have. But as in, like, the Coens are, like, my favorite characters, and you guys... I feel like I've been more mixed. Uh, Lugia has been, like, pretty popular. Again, since... I still only have one viewing of No Country for Old Men under my belt. Lugia's issue with the Coens is just that a lot of their endings are very, like, anticlimactic. Um, and that's an element I like about them, but, like, I can get why it's not, like, you know. A movie I was surprised that I liked, um, and, like, these are kind of, like, shitty movies, but, like, Click, Street Fighter, Jingle All the Way. Like, I thought I was going to hate that shit, and then I watched it, I was like, uh, it's kind of like, it's, it's not that bad. I guess if we're going the opposite direction, for me, that would be the 93 Mario film. Like, I went in with no expectations. I'm like, eh, it's, it's, it's dumb, but like, yeah, it's all right. Um, what about you, Lugia? Opposite direction in terms of a surprise. Uh, what, what do you mean opposite? Like, a disappointment. Oh, I didn't, I didn't talk about disappointments. When I said click Street Fighter Jingle all the way, those are movies I thought I was going to hate, but I liked. Or, okay, yeah, then, th that direction, then. <sighs> I'm trying to think here. Like, in terms of disappointments, I'd say The Firm was probably one of the bigger disappointments, just because, like, I kind of went in with no expectations, but, like, it had um Sidney Pollack, like, directing it, and I was like, oh, Sidney Pollack, that's a good director. And then I watched it, and I was like, is he a good director? Cause like I hadn't seen like any of his other movies, but I was like, but I you know I I knew the name, so I, so I was like, oh shit. I guess um, Silent Hill Revelation, cause it felt, it wasn't like a personal attack or anything, but I recently got done playing Silent Hill three and seeing the film adaptation basic basically butcher it. It, I didn't really take that well. I did have one more question before we we actually jump into the movie. Is there anything you guys are surprised we haven't talked about yet? Um, Hot Fuzz. I'm surprised we have not... To like, boldly not... flee. Um, let's see. And, uh, I think there's, like, a couple big directors we haven't talked about. Like, has the only Scorsese movie we talked about been Taxi Driver? No, The Departed. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm surprised we haven't talked about, like, Goodfellas yet, just because that's, like... Like, I feel like Goodfellas, Pulp Fiction, The Godfather, like, those are, like, the three kind of, like, big gangster movies. So I'm surprised we didn't talk about those. Is Memento the only Christopher Nolan film we've talked about? It is. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I've mentioned that the only other Christopher Nolan film I'm, I'm like, a fan of is The Dark Knight. And I don't, I, I, I wouldn't know what to, like, say for a Dark Knight episode because it's The Dark Knight. Like, I mean, I guess because I'm, I'm negative towards the Christopher Nolan movies, like, compared to other people, I, I'd have a lot to say, but, like, I don't know. That's why I like I haven't recommended it. Like it's been on my list, but I've never felt like eh, I don't want to recommend the Dark Knight just yet or something. Um, let's see. We talked about Fight Club, so we got Fincher kind of covered. Um The Social Network was also a very pleasant surprise. Yeah. It's like uh, somehow never heard of it until you brought it to my attention, Patrick. I'm surprised we haven't talked about the big Lebowski yet. Cause like I'd argue that's like the Coen brothers like most famous film like uh, Fargo is actually probably the most famous film or like no country but, like the big Lebowski is like got such a huge cult following and like I feel like everyone knows like at least one line from the film even though even if you haven't seen it just because of like how iconic it is so like I guess that's surprising well, it does it for my questions is there any questions you guys had oh actually wait one more um 
Yeah. Since we've talked about uh, the Spider-Man trilogy and a simple plan, I'm surprised we haven't talked about the Evil Dead movies yet, just because, like, you know, that's the next big one from... Uh... That's your turf. We've never seen those. Yeah, I know. In fact, Evil Dead is, like, on my list. Um, I was going to recommend it, like, oh, one or two weeks ago, but I decided against it. But uh... There's that new Evil Dead movie out, so, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, but I I, I, don't know. I, I haven't seen uh, the Evil Dead remake yet, which apparently it's a sequel to, so... Like, I know they're unrelated, but, you know. Um, okay, I got one, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm surprised we haven't talked about uh, Michael Bay, Mel Brooks, uh, John Woo, and... Uh, have we talked about Hitchcock? We had to have talked about Hitchcock, right? Nope. Yeah, we've never we done a movie about... from him. Do I recommend, like, Psycho 2 or something? Or No. No. There is, I'm looking at our episode sheet. There is not a mention of Hitchcock anywhere. Huh. We've mentioned him in passing, but we never dedicated the yes. episode to oh, wait, a wait. movie of his. I I got one that it's insane we haven't talked about yet. We have not talked about a single Stanley Kubrick movie. And, like, Stanley Kubrick, he's, like, the director. Like, I'd argue he's, like, the most, like, famous, acclaimed director, like, ever. Also, I don't think we've talked about Citizen Kane. Oh. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, we still got a lot of blind spots before we can safely say this uh, podcast is going to end. Uh, we haven't even done, a like, a John Carpenter movie, which is crazy to me because we've done movies that were very heavily influenced by John Carpenter. Have we done Ridley Scott yet? Soderbergh? No, like, I, I don't think so. My, like, directors I haven't talked about. Uh, let's see. Um, Tim Burton? We haven't done Tim Burton? Holy shit. Oh, didn't we do The Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, but he didn't direct him? that. Yeah, no, uh, Tim Burton, he just wrote, like, the book that Nightmare Before Christmas is based on. Yeah, we, like, we just go by, we go by director. Okay. I ask uh, again, is there any question you guys wanted to ask? Uh, yeah, I guess, um, what, is there any movie that, like, you guys watched, like, for the podcast, but, like, later revisited or later uh, changed your mind on when you thought about it more? Blue Velvet, easy. Jaws. I thought you liked the movie when we- I did like Jaws, I I did like Jaws when I first saw it, but, like, and when he I liked saw it, it even again, more. you're like, oh, this is, like, yeah. actually something really special. Mm-hmm. Like, I, um, I had some minor nitpicks with certain aspects of it, but, like, when I saw it again, I'm like, oh, it, 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 those nitpicks mean jack all. Yeah, um, let me think of, uh, I know I asked this question, but I haven't actually thought about it. Um, I do believe that, uh, I guess, like, I remember, um, Adaptation and, like, uh, Days of Confused, um, I like those a lot, a lot more now than when, like, I first saw them. Uh, so I guess there's that, and let's see what else. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a better one. Yeah, I guess it's just those two. I guess the uh, The Departed a little bit, just because like I remember um, I really shot on that movie, and like I still don't like it that much, but I appreciate The Departed more than I used to. This isn't a change of opinion, but like, I'll be honest, I don't go back to rewatch many of. Be, or re-listen to many of our earlier episodes, but I do recall in the Scott Pilgrim episode, I was a bit harsh towards certain parts of it, like harsher than I feel like I meant to be. Um, what aspects? I don't know. I just I I feel like, like I, think, I think the character relationships specifically, because I said that was the weakest part of it. I don't know. I feel like I was a bit hard towards that. I mean, I, I still really like Scott Pilgrim, but I will acknowledge its faults. Yeah, you know, I have, no, I I know of some people who actually like the movie, but said, "Yeah, no, um, Scott and Ramona are like the worst couple ever." Yeah, and here's the thing. Um, I mean, I, I can I can give myself some slack. It was couple. the first episode, so. See, what I always thought was interesting about Scott Pilgrim is that like Scott P- Scott and Ramona were meant to be like the worst couple ever, but the point of the comic is that like it's a six volume, it's a pretty long comic, so the entire thing was them kind of like growing to be better people together. And that's why in the ending, when they're, like, get back together, in the ending of the actual comic, when they get back together, it's, like, an actual, like, you know, climax, because, like, they change so much. Um, The movie, though, is a lot shorter, so that growth just isn't there. Yeah, so the movie ending felt, like, jarring. And uh, the thing is, is, like, the original intended ending was him getting back with knives, but I also think that's kind of a shitty ending, because um, uh, 
Knives is still 17 years old. Um, so I'm like, ooh, maybe not that ending. That's weird. <laughs> Uh, cause he's like 24 or some shit, or 23, I don't know. So, I think he's 22 in the movie. But like, yeah, I was like, that's, uh, that's not, no, don't do that, Scott. Ooh, no, 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 no. But yeah, so, like, the ending of the Scott Pilgrim movie is a bit clunky to me, but like, it's still pretty good. I still like it. I still, I still, I still think it's a, it's a great watch. Yeah. Even if, even um, if it does have its flaws, but I can, I can overlook a lot of that. I still stand by, like, I still think Edgar Wright's best movies are the ones that he wrote with Simon Pegg. Um, cause th- those are just like really, really tight scripts. Um, but like, you know, Baby Driver and, uh, Scott Pilgrim, they're still like solid enough times. Like, I know you're um, a huge advocate for Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. Actually, I'm a huge advocate for The World's End because people really don't like The World's End. And I'm like, it's a good movie. Why does everyone hate wor- The World's End? Luke, is there any question you wanted to ask us? Uh, um, I guess what's one movie you never heard of? And weren't really enthused by. Um, um, uh, not enthused by. That's different because with Red Rock West, you're like, oh shit, Nicholas Cage, <laughs> like, is half the cast of David Lynch. I'd like, say I'm the firm. Cool. The firm. Yeah, the firm. Okay. I, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 all right. Don't feel bad. Um, I feel see, bad uh, for my grandma because she likes that movie, and that's why I recommended it. I don't know. Um, I guess uh, King Creole, like, I, I wasn't, like, against King Creole or anything, but I was like, oh, it's an Elvis movie, but then, like, it was, like, oh, directed by Michael Curtis. So I was like, oh, oh, wait, that might be something. So I was like, I don't know. It's kind of funny how we saw, like, like, we didn't, like, label King Creole as, like, the Elvis episode, because we also talked about Elvis there, just kind of like how we talked about the Super Mario Bros. movie for 20 Yeah. Years. So I was like, yeah, I don't know, Elvis, that was, that was surprisingly good, just because, um, yeah, I've 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 never hated Baz like other people have, but I've never been like a big Baz Luhrmann fan, so I guess Elvis was surprising. No, actually, okay, I remember what I wanted to ask. Yeah. In terms of episodes that we've done, what was your favorite and least favorite? Ooh, okay. Um least favorite is probably one of the earlier ones. Like I said, I I feel like I could have done better with our first episode, Scott Pilgrim. Favorite episode. Oof, oof. What's that one episode where we just went on like a bunch of fifty billion tangents? <laughs> it was like really uh, funny. Uh, the Social Network. We we barely talked about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like a recent one. I'm talking about this was like like year one. Like I think it was one of like the first episodes where I was like, oh, that that I felt good about that one. Uh, Maybe it was holes or something. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was holes. I remember flushed away. There were a lot of tangents. It might have been flushed away, yeah, because I remember like I had so little to say about flushed away, but I had a lot to say about other things. I feel like um our first year was like an interesting kind of thing, just because like um it was, it was experimental. Like, really out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like um I I guess I I figured like um because I noticed that we didn't always like have stuff to talk about for the movie, so I wanted to toss in like more current events shit. Um, but I feel like we kind of went a bit overboard on the current events shit because I was just trying to talk about everything, but I was like. Honestly, I don't really like. After a while, talk, I talk about about talk really about what interests you. Yeah, give a shit about like half of it, and like, um, yeah, I probably should like do some more like note stuff because like I I'll be honest, I like I only when I do the new stuff now, I just like write whatever like I just remember off the top of my head, and I was like, but uh, there's some stories that probably like worth commentating that uh, like I just remember right now that the drummer of the Smiths passed away, and I was like, oh shit, I probably should have mentioned that before. I need to write stuff down. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Actually, he- here's one more question. It's probably, it- it's kind of a repeat of a question I already asked, but is there a movie you regret choosing? Silent Hill Revelation. I regret uh, picking The Departed just because, like, since it was the first episode and I didn't know it was my thing, I just, like, went on Netflix and just, like, looked at a movie that was, like, there, and I was like, okay, uh, I guess that one. But, like, it wasn't, like, it- I had, like, zero real passion for it. The only reason I, I actually picked The Departed was just because, like, um, I had rewatched it. I did not like it again. And um, so I was just like, you know, I knew I had something to say. But, like, yeah, The Departed, like, it, it would not be a movie, like, I, I would recommend, like, in any other context. So, like, if I, if I ever recommended The Departed, I would probably, like, double feature it with Infernal Affairs just because Infernal Affairs is the original, and I think it's a lot better, and I feel like... It'd be more interesting to like, you know, see 
which one you guys prefer, because there are some people that don't prefer Infernal Affairs. So, like, you know, yeah. So, The Departed. Uh, I don't think uh, Patrick answered my question. What was the question? Uh, what was your favorite and least favorite episode that we've done? Um, like I said, least favorite is one of the earlier ones. Uh, favorite? I don't know, honestly. Really? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I'll try to go with mine. So, I think I, I my remember. least favorite episodes, plural, are the ones where we didn't really have a whole lot to talk about. Uh, mainly, um, one that comes to mind is adaptation. I felt like we just kind of were going through the motions with that one. Yeah, because that one, that was just like a good movie, but it's not like a, a good movie where there's like a ton to say about. Like, I remember it kind of... That one, I guess, I, I kind of, like, regretted a little just because I was like, maybe I should have recommended, like, being John Malkovich instead just because, like, if, I kind of... If we're, going by, if we're going by that logic, I guess I'd say 8 Below. It's like, 8 okay. Below, like, it's well-made, it's likable, but oh, really not yeah, much it, to I it. I completely forgot about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that movie, like, doesn't even, like, register. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, it, it's sweet, but it's... Um, it's, actually, it's, speaking it's, of adaptation, it's pretty forgettable. But in terms of... I do. I did think that the movie we saw before adaptation, Speed Racer, that was one of our better movies, just because we all had like pretty contrasting opinions. So yeah, really arguing a lot more. I'm still amazed you freaked out when the ninja showed up. I wasn't expecting. Okay, and leave me a, alone. Not a, not a fucking I, I was bad in Rugrats. I also remember liking the Vampire's Kiss episode just because I was trying to argue that it was a brilliant piece of satire. Um, but as for uh, Flick the was best or my favorite episode probably bye bye birdie really because i think like just because of my personal experience with uh doing the production in high school and seeing how that translated to the big screen i i don't know why it kind of gave me a sense of nostalgia i'd honestly say like some of her best episodes were like at the start of the second year because the frozen one was really funny signs in the village that was interesting because we all had pretty different opinions click um, none of us expected to like it, and then we did, so that was insane. Then Bye Bye Birdie, with, you know, all those very differing perspectives. I remember Heat was kind of interesting. Heat like, he was uh, just a fantastic time all around. Yeah, but, like, I also remember, like, we all praised it, but we all, we all had our own little criticisms of it, which, uh, you know, I like when, you know, there's that. Um, I remember nothing about the Joker review. What did we talk about in Joker? Clowns. I know I, I, know I, I did like 15 Joker impressions during that review, but like I don't remember what I actually said. Um, let's see. The Fully Cooly episode. I guess I that episode I feel like um that was something like that I really loved, but I'm not sure like I properly like prepped you guys on it because like it's it's definitely like such a, a really weird thing, but I kind of just wanted to see what your guys' blind opinions were. But it's like one of those series where like I, I think you need to watch it more than once. It was a different standard than what we were used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, because it was like a mini series, and like Riley Rewind was a mini series, but that was like a very different kind of mini series. Where it was like, like fully coolly, the, the the episodes were like actual episodes. It wasn't just like. It just happened to have the runtime of a movie. Yeah. I don't remember what we said for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, but I do remember having a lot of fun doing the impression. Actually, some I, of, okay. Some of my favorite episodes are just the ones where we did really stupid impressions. <laughs> okay, like actually, red one. I made so all the ones movies. with Christopher Walken we just did in The Voice. <laughs> Pulp Fiction, yeah. Catch Me If You Can, Seven Psychopaths. Blue Velvet, that, that, Blue Velvet was an interesting one just because, um, one, we kind of came back to Blue Velvet a bit when you, like, uh, when you rewatched it, but, like, um, the Blue Velvet one was interesting, but also, uh, uh, besides, like, us just repeating Dennis Hopper, but, like, I remember, like, Patrick was really off-put by it. I really liked it. And um, Lugia was uh, like in the middle, so like, that was an interesting episode. Keyword was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse. I thought that was the re both of the Resident Evil ones. I thought were interesting just because um, again varying opinions, but also like they they were like such a there was something very interesting about them, especially because like we we did have uh you know uh, two of us had experience with the games and uh, one of us didn't um. The Street Fighter one too because uh, Jingle All the Way. Oh shit, that was a great episode. Jingle All the Way. Just because of Arnie impressions. It wasn't just Arnie impressions, but like in general, just talking about the movie was really funny and it was like so absurd and like it was another one of those cases where like um, it was kind of shitty, but we kind of loved it at the same time. 
Actually, hold on. I, I thought about it. Um, Lugi, I think I can answer the favorite episode question. Um, I don't have a direct answer, but I do have a few contenders. Okay. One, one um, election. Election was was a fun time. Okay. That was another pleasant surprise. That's a movie yeah, I'd never heard of, and I, I ended up really loving. That, um... Yeah. Who, just because... Like, I had a I feeling you'd say who. I didn't refer to anybody by their by their movie name. I referred to them as Percy Jackson yeah. and Captain Marvel. <laughs> I don't know. That was just... I don't know. I tried to make that more interesting. That... Jaws 2 was interesting, because it's like, it's not good, but it's not bad. Like, it's it's a, it was a weird middle ground. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, just because of how weird it was. Um... Furry Vengeance, I like just because we memed on a bunch of really bizarre things in it. I mean, Furry Vengeance is the one movie for me I regret. Because the, the whole reason I chose that movie was because, hey, we, we've we liked a lot of what we've talked about so far. I'm going to change that. You know what? I'm going to say it. Uh, when we talk about movies that like we kind of hated but we turned around on, um, I still think Furry Vengeance is a bad movie, but it's not one of those bad movies that I can enjoy. Really? Yeah, I don't know, man. I've had um Brendan Fraser saying, I got us a Nintendo Wii, and then the kids screaming. That has played in my head at so many at random points throughout the year. So I, I just gotta love that one scene. Him name dropping Furry Vengeance when he won like an actor award. Yeah. It was like very funny. It was like, where was the support for Furry Vengeance? We were there. I don't know. Maybe if I if I chose it now, it would be a bit more fun, but at the time it was just like this was a mistake. Yeah, at the, at the time, I don't... You played your cards too early? I probably did. I don't know. I, I feel like I, if I wanted to do a movie we didn't like, I probably could have gone with a more interesting option. I don't I really, know. I thought Furry Avengers was... I, I still think that Furry Avengers episode was interesting because it was... um Half of it was me um having, like, amnesia. And then you're just, like... You're, like, detailing, like, events in my life that I just didn't remember. And I was, like, Allow me to give you the lore of... It was, like, a traumatic memory. <laughs> It was like one of those like traumatic memories that like you erase from your mind. It was like I don't remember any of this. What's going on? Okay, it's it's a movie I liked when I was a kid, which is why I chose it. I'm like, this does not hold up um, at all. Okay, here's an interesting one. So of the movies that we saw like together as a group, which one was like the most fun? Um, I know my answer. Um, I thought uh, Team America: World Police. That was so much fun watching. I, I thought you were. I, agree. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were going to say Fateful Findings. I think me and Lugia had a lot of fun yeah, watching that. I don't, I don't think you did, like... Patrick. No, I was I was more like, what the hell? I mean, it was it was interesting, like, in terms of I, what I was happening like, on screen. I remember laughing when he, like, at the scene where he kept smashing the laptops. Like, I remember us all cracking up with that one. But, like, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting one. I don't know. Like, in terms of So Bad It's Good movies, uh, at least for me, Fateful Findings is one of the more enjoyable ones. Do you know... That he's making a new film. Really? Yeah. And it yeah, has it won a ton of awards from mm -hmm. film festivals. Like actual film festivals? Or like yeah. Small ones. Okay. I don't know. Uh, it was kind of fun watching Romeo and Juliet just because... Yeah, uh, that Lugia, one was also Lug really fun. Lugia slowly descended into madness. Yeah. <laughs> God, I mean... I, that That's probably one of my more favorite ones just because of how absurd it was <laughs> it's it's a labor of love <laughs> yeah it's a labor. but the product was just what <laughs> it's what happens when one man makes a movie by himself over the course of like four years uh it does think it does things to a man um the 93 again the 93 mario movie i i had fun with i don't know if you guys did but i i've seen it before so the know, surprise I've, I've wasn't there that and Street Fighter, I, like, I was like, <sighs> Street Fighter, I, like, I remember, I was like, this isn't that bad. I was like, this is kind of good. What the hell? Yeah. Also, the the new Mario movie. I just think, well, because I've seen that movie a few times now with people, it's it's a great time. Like, yeah. as a movie, it leaves it leaves stuff to be desired, but I think, like, as an experience. I it's... think the Rugrats movie, specifically the <laughs> second one, was a lot of fun to watch with you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I oh, I went ate shit like in the first Rugrats movie when the uh, when the Bible references started. I was like, oh yeah. my god! <laughs> and the Pearl Harbor joke. No, when um when we saw the first movie and Patrick said, "Okay, what do you think is going to happen?" And then it turned out to be like an Indiana Jones sequence. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Doubled um, down by how the second movie starts I with was, the Godfather. I was so thrown off because um when I watched the first Rugrats, I was really thrown off because it really reminded me of this one uh Crayon Shinchan movie I saw. 
which is this weird an comedy anime that only I'm into. But I was like, damn, this is real like that movie. And I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know. Okay, I guess one movie I uh, I have a little bit of regret of is All That Jazz, just because I feel like I didn't say nearly as much as I wanted to, and that's just because, like, I didn't have the time to, like, rewatch it, so, like, I was just going off my memory. So I was, All like, That Jazz was another surprise. Yeah. Yeah. That movie yeah, was I know, fantastic. I knew, like, you guys, like, liked it, so, like, I don't regret regretting it. Cause, like, oh, I loved it. it. Yeah, but, like, it, I just, like, I wish I didn't have, like, so much, like, shit going on at the time, so I could have, like, properly rewatched it, because um, I believed at that point... That was, like, the end of August, so I was, like, moving into, like, my apartment and shit then, so, like, yeah, I, I, I got a little bit sidetracked that week. Actually, that's a question also, I want to ask you guys. Is yeah. there an episode that you would want to redo? Um, Just any of the ones where, like, I didn't, like, get to rewatch the film, and I had to go off yeah, my memory. Yeah, same. So, like, um, I didn't, like, Seven Psychopaths, I didn't get to rewatch. Um, So, like, that one wasn't that bad. I feel like I, I was still able to articulate my points, but I, I still felt like... I, I should have rewatched that. Like um, I said, uh, either Scott Pilgrim or Jaws, because I felt like I could have phrased certain aspects of it better. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about you, Lugia? Probably. Uh, I, I... <sighs> actually, I have a, another regret. Actually, another thing about it. Uh, Throne of Blood. I kind of wish I didn't recommend Throne of Blood. In fact, that's like the only one where I'm like, I legit kind of regret recommending that one just because like, so I, I just wanted to recommend a short Kurosawa movie uh, that was about samurais, and that was like you know the one that hit, hit all the check marks. But I was like, to this day, I I still really like the movie, but I, it's still like I don't think it really represents what what I I really like about Kurosawa as a filmmaker. And I feel like I just kind of like did a bit of a disservice. It, it was the same thing with like The Departed, where I was like, I really don't think that should have been like the first one from that director we talked about because it really doesn't like show why he's a good director. So, like, if I had to redo it, I'd probably, like, recommend, uh, I don't know, like, Ron or something. I think Actually, maybe okay. I did um, Baby Driver a little too early. Oh, really? Since we, since we did um, that and Scott Pilgrim, like, in the same year. Like, maybe I should have spaced that out a little bit more. I thought it was actually pretty spaced out, because, like, Baby Driver was in uh, October. And we started in February, so that was, like, such a big Oh, and Boogie Nights. Because that was actually um, Elias's suggestion that he recommended that I put on. So I kind of regret not having him for that one, considering that he wanted us yeah. to do that. And he was only <laughs> in episode one. <laughs> and yeah. never seen again. Part of me re regrets that I didn't recommend bo uh, Goodfellas earlier, because um, almost because of the Boogie Nights episode... Because I spent a lot of the Boogie Nights episode comparing it to Goodfellas, and I feel like y'all didn't have, like, a frame of reference to what I was talking about. Yeah, no, we've never seen it. Yeah. Hey, if, if you guys ever feel bad, or, like, you should have done something earlier or whatever, remember, I waited a year to choose Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> I am dedicated. I waited. Oh, um, And then it took us, like, so uh, I did, 14 obviously. days to get to it. <laughs> um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I have a little bit of regret just because I kind of waited to the last minute to watch that one. So, like, I saw it, um, like, but I, we, like, literally, like, recorded the episode, like, immediately after I saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and I was like, I wish, like, I just had, like, maybe a day or two to, like, digest it or something better. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, like, honestly, I kind of made that mistake the, this episode, too, because I, I watched, uh, The Abyss last night, but, uh, that one, I was, I, I was able to di digest fine, so it's not that big a deal. But, Speaking yeah. of The Abyss, uh, we should probably get to that, shouldn't we? Yeah. Do we have anything else we want to say beforehand, or... Actually, yes, I did have, I did have one more question. Okay. Right, I promise, this is the last one. Is there any movie where you guys chose it expecting us to have a certain reaction, but didn't? Uh, yeah, there's a few. So, um... I expected you to, uh, you, Patrick, to love But I'm a Cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> that is a movie I will rewatch. Pride Month is coming up. I'll probably rewatch it next month. I was like, oh, man. Uh, uh, I, I was, like, trying to think of, like, an artsy film that you would dig, and I was like, I grossly miscalculated that. Um, I was expecting us to be... Like to meme on Spider Man three, but Red, you actually said like it was a good movie. Yeah, and Patrick agreed with me. Um, I was expect I, I was expecting a bigger reaction, particularly from Lugia in regards to Rugrats in Paris. Like I thought you would lose your mind over that movie, but <laughs> you were like, no, this is good. 
It's a cartoon. Uh, I, was, I was surprised by the reactions to uh, the Coen Brothers flicks, just because uh, they click with me so much that, like, um, and, like, they're so acclaimed that I, I just kind of, I didn't, like, even consider that, oh, right, yeah, all their movies do kind of have, like, anticlimactic endings, and, like, that was just never, like, an issue for me, so I just, I never, like, even considered that, so I was like, oh, okay. I also That's wasn't funny. expecting you guys to like Bye Bye Birdie as much as you did. No, yeah, no. I've already said my piece on that. Yeah, um, let's see. I was kind of expecting more of a reaction from Training Day. Really? I, I really like Training Day. I praised that a lot, I thought. You said it was, like, if it wasn't for Denzel Washington, like, that was just a standard movie. You know what? Okay, you know what? Um, I think I was the one who said that. And, you know, if I did say that, then I'm going to say now that uh, I guess Training Day is one of the movies where I have grown to like it a lot more since the episode, <laughs> because uh, I really fuck with Training Day now. I don't know why. I guess I was a little bit, I felt like the Matrix and Ghost in the Shell episode, like, I felt like the reactions were a bit more lukewarm than I expected. Like, you liked them all, but like, you know, I was like, huh. Like, I don't know. I, I just felt like there'd be more strong emotions just like in general. Um, let's see, Blue Velvet I got about exactly what I expected, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I was surprised by how much you guys fucked with The Handmaiden. I thought that movie would, like, throw you guys off more, but, like, nah, you actually surprisingly liked it. Did it did in a couple spots. Like, yeah, I, I mean... I, I, yeah, but, like, that, the, the parts that threw you off, like, was kind of, like, expected. Like, yeah. You, you guys just liked the it more than I thought. Um... Yeah, it's, what's weird, the scene I skipped was the ending torture scene, none of the sex stuff. That was the scene where I'm like, this is too much. Um... I thought the Heat episode was interesting just because, like, I I figured you guys would like it, but it was, like, one of those movies where, like, I, I generally, like, had no idea what you guys were going to think. I was just like, I'm going to recommend it. I'm going to see what happens. I think they're going to like it, but I'm not sure. Um, and you did, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, that that's easily one of the best movies, in my opinion, that we've seen on the podcast. Um, An easy I 10 out of 10. I was oh, also, here's another I, one. Um, Punch Drunk Love, I thought you guys were going to love it, and you guys were more thrown off by it than I yeah. thought you were. <laughs> um, I also thought you guys would be more thrown off by Princess Kaguya, but you guys just fucking adored that movie. Yep. That was a great time. Y'all thought that, like, you straight up said that, that that might be, like, the best movie we saw when we first put it on. I was like, damn, I did not expect that from you. I was surprised by, uh, oh, actually, uh, Patrick, one more thing. Um, yeah. I like Dazed and Confused a lot more now than I did when we recorded the episode. Oh, uh, that should make my dad happy. <laughs> Did you guys like In the Mood for Love? It yeah. was all right. Well, I, 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 was, I was more positive towards it than Lugia okay, was. I think, um, okay, the In the Mood for Love surprised me just because, like, um, it was before I, I, I understood, I, I got, like, um, it was before I could, like, wrap my head around uh, Lugia's, like, um, thoughts on, like, pacing and stuff, because, uh, I, like, for some reason that stuff doesn't bother me like, I, like it does other people, but, like, once I like understood that, I was like, "Oh, okay, I, I get it." Um, I'm st I was still really surprised by like the thoughts on Chunking Express and Fallen Angels. I, I, Fallen I Angels, thought... I didn't see. Okay, yeah, I, th I, that's kind of funny. I think you'd like Fallen Angels more. Like, I still stand by that. But like, I was, I feel, I thought, I thought Chunking Express was gonna get like a bigger response, just mostly because like, um, you guys like really connected with the first half of the movie the first half hour, but the second segment was, like, the one that made me really love Chunking Express, and I feel like y'all were a bit more lukewarm on that, so I... Yeah, because they just me. changed the story on the spot. That's what yeah. got us confused. Yeah. And again, I, since it was I, only two stories, it felt... Yeah, odd. yeah. No, I, I remember two thoughts where it was like, yeah. Um, I, now, I did expect you guys to be, like, a little bit mixed on it, just because, like, I felt stylistically they have, like, uh, some in common with Punch Drunk Love, so I, I wasn't, like, too surprised, but I was, like, I did, I, I did kind of expect for Chunking Express, at least, that you guys would like the second half more, <laughs> just because, like, I like the second half more, but, like, yeah. I got um, a few others. Um, I was not expecting you guys to be under, particularly underwhelmed by Closed for Storm. I thought you'd be at least, like, yeah, it's, it's, mm. yeah. I mean, it was okay, uh, but, but, but yeah, I I mean, fair enough. You know, it, I guess cuz I'm into that stuff, it was more appealing to me. And that's but, fine. I know, um, I know. So I knew that so when I recommend all that jazz, I figured that uh Patrick would like it. Um but I I guess I was still like uh, like, like just a tiny bit surprised by how much cuz I I still figured like it was still it had like some elements that like um shared with like some of the weirder movies that like didn't uh click as much. So like when all that jazz did click, I was like, "Oh, okay, great. Fantastic." Uh, also, another one, I was 
not sure how you guys would feel about Groundhog Day the musical. Like, I could see you guys going either way. But you guys said you liked it, right? Yeah, yeah. it was just another way of seeing Groundhog's Day. Um, this one is, I surprise myself, but um, I thought I would like Suburban Nights more than I did. People <laughs> like, said I that was the best one, right? Yeah, people always told me that was the best of the Nostalgia Critic movies, and I watched it, I'm like, I hate this. What Actually... Asia is so much better. Actually, yeah, that is exactly... That's kind of what I was, because I went into kick ass I'm like, you know what? This is bearable. Like, it, was, it was Suburban what? Nights where it shit really hit the fan. I was like, man, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, I'll give credit, kick ass there were some good jokes in there. They were just... It just went on way too long. Um, let's see. I was kind of expecting more of a reaction from the firm. But the thing yeah. is, the reason why was because I only caught the second half of the movie at my grandmother's house. And she said, oh, maybe you should talk about this on your podcast or whatever. And I'm like, okay, we could do that. And I didn't know what the first half of the movie was going to have. And I, and that kind of bored you guys. Yeah. I was also um, expecting a bit of a bigger reaction from Pleasantville. Really? I thought I, I, I really liked Pleasantville. Yeah, that was, that was a good time. Huh. Like, just because, like, I didn't express what, what were you expecting? I don't know. I thought you... I kind of thought you guys would be on a similar wavelength as me. Like, like oh, this is great. I feel like I'm more it was. I, it, it's grown on me a, a more since I've seen it. But yeah. And um, I was, I, like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> the apartment, I was a little bit surprised by the apartment because like, I, I, okay, I've noticed uh, the, the, the running trend is that my taste in rom-coms, I think, is not the same as your your taste of rom coms. Because every time I recommend a romantic comedy, I'm like, oh, they're gonna love this shit. And then, <laughs> I, and then like they know, then you guys mentioned complaints that I didn't even consider. And I was like, oh, right, yeah, that is kind of weird. I just that doesn't bother me. I was like, okay. Um, let's um, see, sexy beast. Um, actually, that doesn't surprise me. Like that, I got it about exactly what I expected there. I f- that's another movie I feel like I should rewatch. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'll probably get it more on a second um, round. I guess I think you you guys liked Wild at Heart way more than I thought you would, just because of you know the Blue Velvet reaction. Just because I think we kind of expected. We're desensitized we were by into. David Lynch. Yeah, I feel like if I hadn't seen Blue Velvet, I would have been more thrown off. Yeah, you guys liked Night of the Hunter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that that one was about expected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that's about it. Is that yeah, it? Get, are I, we... I think we've I think we've gone okay. on enough. Of we a are an hour into the recording. <laughs> I think we have, and a we new have record. spent ninety percent of it just on the podcast <laughs> retrospective. <laughs> this is, yeah. I mean, you know, episode one hundred. No better time. All right, now time for James Cameron. All we are right. not going to spend yeah. nearly as long on this. We I can guarantee not. it. We are not. I'm sorry. This is probably going to be a bitch to edit. No, it's fine. Okay, so yes, let's dive in the abyss. So. The Abyss was directed by James Cameron, director of Piranha 2, and some other movies. Now, but, but for real, everybody's seen a James Cameron film. I'm reminded of that one quote in the 30 Rock Alec Baldwin's character made once. It's like, oh, James Cameron's coming out with a new movie that everybody will see, whether they want to or not. James Cameron, um, he has a reputation as uh, just um, having a, a knack to make an incredible amount of money, regardless of if people like it or not. Um, he, he's like up there with George Lucas, where he just has a control over the wallet of every person. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I was not expecting Avatar two to be like as big a hit as it was. I, I, like I knew it'd be a hit, but I didn't think it would be like third highest grossing film of all time. But that is neither here nor there. Anyway, The Abyss is actually based on a short story that Cameron wrote when he attended a science lecture in high school about deep sea diving. And after the success of his first three movies, he decided, you know what? This is going to serve as the basis for my next film. And The Abyss had one of the most difficult productions in film history. Yeah, James, James Cameron, <clears throat> according to Almost the... Almost killed, like, 15 people. Well, Jeez. I'm getting to that. According to the DVD commentary, James Cameron wanted to do what 2001 did, except underwater. Cameron wanted to use as few models as possible and have everything to scale. And the studio was initially very hesitant about that, but considering his success with his previous films, they were like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And and originally, Cameron wanted to film directly in the ocean, but because of the unpredictability of the waves and the currents and the weather, that was not really an option. 
So they instead filmed in two abandoned nuclear tanks in Gaffney, South Carolina. The crew spent two weeks dive training, which was the only time any of them had any degree of fun during production. Because once filming started, shit got intense. Uh, the, the actors would spend around three to five hours you underwater every day. Too. What? You can kind of tell on the screen, too, that like uh, they were a little bit antsy. And many of them, particularly Ed Harris and Mary Elizabeth, they nearly drowned on several occasions. And they would constantly get into arguments with James Cameron over the conditions and how dangerous it was. I'm and, amazed and they wouldn't point, just quit on the spot. Well, one of them, uh, actor J.C. Quinn wanted to quit within the first few shoots, but he was contractually obligated to stay. Fuck. But that, that was, and that's, just, that's just the beginning, because filming was supposed to start in early August 1988, but because the Deep Core rig wasn't finished, filming was delayed. And by the end of the month, it still wasn't finished, but Cameron decided to start filming anyway. And it took... it. Both tanks were filled with 11 million gallons of water brought in from the nearby lake, and it took five days for both of them to, to be filled up. And because construction wasn't finished, they had to finish construction as the water level rose. So, you know, when they got the water, that was the end of the, of the trouble, right? <laughs> no, because the pH levels of the water weren't properly measured, so the chlorine caused most of the people in the water who weren't wearing any form of protection over their face and their head specifically have their hair bleached, which almost sent them to the hospital. Jesus Christ! Yeah, like I said, one of the most difficult productions in film history. Don't tell me there's more. Um, there's a lot more from oh, fucking like, the actors hell. individually. I'm not going to go into all that, though. There is an excellent documentary on the special edition DVD detailing everything, and there's like plenty of articles and YouTube videos about it. Just know that it was rough. I thought we wouldn't get as bad as Apocalypse Now, but, like, Jesus. Yeah, well, well, I guess, like Apocalypse Now, the movie's still pretty good. I like it. Um, uh, well, before we move on to its release, there's one, one fun fact I want to mention. I just found this kind of funny. So, during film production, you know how clapboards are cut at the start of shooting a scene? Yeah. Mm. Well, underwater, you can't do that, so in order to get a sound, they would ink the, the actors helmets oh i don't know that's just funny to me that's just cute yeah that's kind of <laughs> no like in the dvd commentary they talk about that and they're like it was it was kind of humiliating honestly <laughs> no i thought it was funny it was funny so like, um, at the end like, they're just you find out the like the clinking of the helmet like uh, almost like killed someone or some shit like just it's, <laughs> this is anyway. just escalating when filming wrapped up, the runtime of the film was originally two hours and 50 minutes, but due to pushes from Industrial Light and Magic combined with middling test audience reactions, Cameron cut 30 minutes from the film. More on that later, just keep that in the back of your head. The film was released in 1989, where it earned $90 million on a budget of around $45 million. Various sources say different things, but around that ballpark. So not a major critic, uh, commercial success, but it was well-received critically, and it garnered four Oscar nominations, winning yeah, Best yeah. Visual Effects, so which was, I believe, the first time a James Cameron film won an Oscar. Yeah. All right. I'm sure James Cameron was uh, glad of all the practice he got, which he definitely used <laughs> in his later films. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, to less dangerous degree. So uh, before I actually go over the plot, um, so, Red, you said this is the one James Cameron film you haven't seen? Uh, I haven't seen, like, Piranha 2, but, like, yeah. Actually, no, uh, I have seen Piranha 2 on TV. So, yes, it's the only James Cameron movie I had not seen yet, so I have now completed his filmography. All right, <laughs> achievement unlocked. Uh, Lugia, what is your what is your background? Titanic and oh, Aliens. No. I haven't seen Titanic, duh. I forgot All right. Yeah, yeah. I am right. surprised at that, considering, like, how much of a film buff you are. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, there's some movies that are, like, so big where you're just like, ah, oh, I'll get around to it, but, like, you just never... One of these days. Do. Who knows? Maybe a future episode. Remember, like, but... I saw Casablanca for the first time last year in my film class. Like, <laughs> I didn't even watch it, like, in my own volition. My my experience with The Abyss, I, I told so you guys... Weird, like, watching Casablanca after seeing King Creole, because I was like... I, I was like... Hey, listen, yeah. I can relate. You guys saw The Social Network years ago, and I never did. And everyone talked no, about this, it. No, this was my first time as well. I had heard of it, but I'd never seen it. Yeah. Anyway, the surprising um, thing wasn't that you didn't see it. The surprising thing was that you never heard of it. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, my experience with The Abyss, I told you guys this was the first James Cameron film I ever saw. I remember uh, my dad showing it to me when I was really young. Uh, but Especially, um, speaking of dads, it's really funny. When I told my dad I was watching it, he was like, oh, that's a great picture. So I feel like dad is just... <laughs> Is really Maybe. I mean, this is, this is one of my dad's favorites, so... I never asked my dad about this. Maybe I should. All right. So anyway, let's get into the real nitty-gritty with the plot. So, in the abyss, a U.S. submarine is thrown off course and sinks 2,000, 2000 miles beneath the ocean surface. And so a rescue operation is put in place on a submersible rigging platform with some SEALs on board to carry out the operation. The SEALs believe that the submarine was shot down by the Russians and devise a plan to prepare for a potential follow-up attack, but the folks on the oil rig believe that it's something else. But when a hurricane passes over, the rig loses contact with the surface, and the folks aboard discover non-terrestrial intelligence, or NTIs, creatures living below the, below the surface, deep in the depths of the ocean. And the rig workers believe that the NTIs mean no harm, but the SEALs think that they pose a threat and plan an attack. So now it's a race for the rig workers to stop the seals and make contact with the surface before their oxygen supply runs out. And we have our James Cameron movie. So, so um, who wants to start? Yeah, I have a few thoughts just because um, contextually, I thought it was very interesting how this almost feels like a culmination of James Cameron's career up until this point. I agree. This, <laughs> this is like the most James Cameron movie he ever made. Because like the blueprints are all here. Like, you know, water... Submarines, like it, it, it aliens, feels, it feels like military. Yeah. It feels like, it feels like a combination Flooding. of everything he's made up to this point and a prologue to everything he was going to make after. Because, it's like the um, blueprints almost. You got the horror elements of Terminator, the, obviously the water shit from, you know, uh, from Piranha 2 and stuff. But um, all like... The flooding very, of very Titanic. Like spaceship dynamics there. It reminds me of a lot of Alien. Um, I know he directed Aliens, not Aliens, so it's kind of funny that this reminded me more of the first Alien movie. Um, but like, I was about to say that too. Yeah, no, this <laughs> reminded me a lot of the first Alien movie. Yeah, so it's like it's just kind of funny that after he made Alien Two, he was just like, "I'm gonna make Alien One again." Um, Let's make an Alien movie that, more Alien than Alien. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, it also really reminded me of Sunshine because Sunshine was very similar to Alien, but at the end it goes in like this weird artsy direction. So when you mentioned that he was trying to be like 2001, I was like, "Oh, that makes sense. I get it now." Because, I was like, remind. The second one remi- gets like you know weird and shit. I was reminded a little bit of a of Event Horizon, but if it wasn't like as horrific. Yeah, I mean Event Horizon is another like alien inspired thing. I yeah, I've seen Event Horizon yet though. So the three the three movies I I was reminded of when watching this were one Atlantis, duh. Two is a uh, Twister because it's a disaster thriller that also has a divorce going on. And so three that, that is good. actually oh, Gravity. You guys know Gravity? No. Yes. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. Um, particularly yeah. around the end, I was reminded of Gravity. You know, it's funny you mentioned the divorce thing because um, when I mentioned that this feels like a prologue to James Cameron's later works, like obviously the connections with like Avatar and Titanic are there, but the thing that I that stood out to me was like the the main couple's like relationship, that sort of dysfunctional relationship, um, remind me a lot of True Lies because True Lies is about a very dysfunctional relationship. Again, the blueprints are all here. <laughs> yeah. it is but I mean, James Cameron movie. But I mean, other than you know the comparison to other James Cameron's film, what do we think of it? You know, as it is. Good, yeah. yeah it, was it was a solid, solid enough solid time. Good, like the cinematography. That's like on another level. Like he went, he was cracked when he made this. Well, again, considering everything that he went through to get this film made and everything the actors did, it yeah. like their efforts paid off tremendously. Yeah, it's it, it it does really remind me of a lot of um, Apocalypse Now in that sense, just because like. Apocalypse Now is, in my opinion, one of the best-looking movies ever made, and it was hell to make it that way, and then, you know, same thing here. You know? Remember, mm-hmm. kids, um, if you want perfection, uh, torture people. I'm kidding. Isn't that the whole point of Evil Dead? You guys but like... the drum up movie, it's gonna be insane. I like to describe this as, like, a shit-hit-the-fan type of film, because it just keeps building. Oh. Like, the seal, like, they're trapped underwater. The, like, the crane broke. They're trapped under. It's sliding towards the cliff. There's a crazy seal on board. They're running out of oxygen. Like, it just keeps building. You're like, these people cannot catch a break. <laughs> There's one thing that felt really weird about this film. It was the ending. Because for the most part, this movie played it kind of straight as a science fiction uh, type movie. And then uh, Bud goes down, like, 
fucking 20,000 feet under sea level, which was fucking insane, but he just meets aliens. And, like, he has this whole trip through, like, some sort of alien city. Well, that was okay. so bizarre. Remember? Again, that, that's what I'm like. It reminded me of, like, Sunshine in 2001. Yeah. Sunshine in 2001 were basically these, like, spaceship horror movies where, like, in the last act, it became the most absurd um, experimental shit I've seen, like, in a while. Well, like, Sunshine okay. basically became, like, a weird, bizarre slasher movie. It was like, I don't know. Okay. This one's I, certainly like ambitious as hell. Like, Jesus Christ. All right. Remember, I told you guys that 30 minutes were cut from the film? Yeah. And I yeah. assume those 30 minutes that... were about the aliens. Okay. Let me ask you something. The version of the. There are two versions of the film um, there's the uh, theatrical cut and the extended cut. I saw the theatrical. The okay. I was going to ask. Um, the version you watched was two hours and like 20, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I know there's an extended there's an extended version that like has a bunch of like Cold War stuff commentary mm -hmm. and then like uh, some aliens that were like gonna create like these mega tsunamis or some shit. Yeah, and then they that's that's yeah, that's a large part a large portion of what was cut. There are some smaller scenes as well, like that add on to more of the character relationships. But that is like the ma the big major change with the waves. It, it does add a bit more context to the aliens in certain aspects, but I will say um, the alien stuff does feel like it could have been more developed. Yeah, especially at the end where they resurface and then everybody is like, oh my god, look, and they're smiling. It's like, hey, our friends are back. Like, the movie. there are aliens. Shouldn't you be more freaked out? You ha there is a giant, unidentified alien submersible surfacing up to sea level and your first instinct is yo our friends <laughs> it, it felt so odd the ending felt so weird in comparison to the rest of the movie it, it, but i mean at, at least they did build up the alien slowly uh, slow actually, if we for can, like two scenes yeah I, but actually can we talk about that for a second um i said my dad showed this movie to me when i was younger that scene with the sentient water has been ingrained in my mind for over a decade i thought that was the coolest yeah. thing when i was a kid and to yeah. this day it still looks great yeah it looked it really does and then you know watching it i was like oh so this is uh this is where the terminator 2 liquid metal thing yep <laughs> like, yeah. like, like no joke this is where this is this is where it started I got actually apparently he had the idea for liquid metal like uh when Terminator won, but the tech wasn't there yet. Um or at least he couldn't afford the tech yet. So uh, I I do wonder if like maybe he got the idea for like this living water thing just as like a recycled idea for that, and then when, when the studio was like, Hey, make Terminator two, he's like, Oh shit. Okay. Maybe. I mean again, he did come up with the idea for Avatar in the mid nineties, but he intentionally waited until the tech was right. Like like love or hate James Cameron, you gotta admire his ambition. Yeah. I kind of want to see Avatar now after seeing this. <laughs> Avatar 2, I still stand by as being really, really good. I still am uh, not too hot on the first one, but the second one is, ooh. James Cameron knows how to make a sequel. So we've, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects, but if I can be real, I think the strongest part of this movie is the relationship between Lindsay and Bud. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Some real like, strong like, character stuff. Like, yeah, they're, like, we've seen like the archetype of like the divorced couple working together, but I think the performances here and their chemistry like are really something special. Like that that scene where Lindsay where Lindsay intentionally drowns herself. Like I legit didn't know if she was gonna live or not. Yeah, that scene was so intense. And Bud's like, "Come on, wake up!" Kept keeps slapping her, keeps trying to bring her back to life. That got me. Yeah, and also yeah, was... when and also the inverse when Bud is going deeper and deeper into the abyss, and she's and she's talking to him like like I love you like. I just wish I could say that to your face. Like, those are the two strongest scenes in the movie, if you ask me. For as much shit, people. This one actually had like some pretty like sharp dialogue, and I like uh, people have oft often criticized like Cameron's dialogue, but I, I don't know. I felt like this. Maybe it's because of the actors, but like they really sold it. Mm hmm. What was the movie you compared this to again earlier? Um, Twister. No, not Twister. Gravity. The... Atl Atlantis. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I thought, for some reason, like. There's this one movie that I, I it reminded me of, but I can't like place it. Because we said Twister, Gravity, Atlantis, Alien, Sunshine, Event Horizon, 2001. You also, you also said True Lies, Red. 
Yeah, but like, I don't know, it was it was something like more specific. I just can't remember. Oh well. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lin- Lindsay and Bud are absolutely the show stealers here. But I also got to give credit to Coffee. Like that dude is Coffee terrifying. is the sole reason why this reminded me of Alien One, <laughs> with the android. Like yeah. other other than um other than the the sentient water, the two other scenes that have been ingrained into my mind are is the scene where. Coffee is slowly pulling on the chains and he's trembling, and also the scene where he dies. Do we have anything else we want to say? I mean, we, t- we said uh, that the effects still hold up. Uh, the relationship between Bud and Lindsay is the strong is the strongest part. The aliens were um, weird. <laughs> it could have been more developed in some areas. Um, I think I've said my piece. You guys? Yeah, no. It's kind of a shame that we spent more time talking about us. Hey, but I mean, at, at least like we're enthusiastic about this. Yeah, no, this yeah, was I mean, a good time. We've talked a decent amount. It's, it's uh, it is compelling. It, um, it's James Cameron doing James Cameron like in top form. Yeah, I feel like um, if you're a fan of his other stuff, you'll definitely like enjoy this. But uh, absolutely, yeah, and again, I really appreciate how ambitious it is. It like um, it feels like a, a like a collection of like all. Of, it feels like a greatest hits album almost. But um, <laughs> again, the fact it's that like, like a, it's, it's like a blueprint for like what was to yeah. come. And, like, I'm sure a lot of people would probably be like, oh, I just prefer, like, you know, the more concentrated, you know, fleshed out version of it. But I don't know. I, I kind of can appreciate this sort of a hodgepodge of different ideas. Yeah, like, it, yeah, it could be a bit a bit tight, a, m- a bit more tightly written. But for what's here, I think, like, it, it's great. Lugia? Yeah. No, I'm on the same boat. Or, I'm sorry, I'm on the same sub as you. <laughs> great time. Uh... I'd probably watch like Titanic over this, but no, it was it was still compelling. It still had some really strong moments. It was just the ending took a really weird turn and it caught me off guard. I do hope this movie gets re-released like an IMAX at some point. Because like to see this on the big screen would be something. Yeah. Okay. Um this wasn't the movie I was thinking about, but it at some points kind of remind me of the hunt for Red October just because it's a uh... It's an underwater thing, but it's also like very, like very clearly based on like tension and like not knowing what's outside and stuff, which I thought was kind of cool. So if you like I... this, check out every movie we mentioned already. All right. Yeah. Should we go down the list again or no? Uh, no. I think I think they get. Okay. The okay. All right. So we decided we're gonna keep this podcast train going. Red one hundred and one. What do you got? Uh yes. Um. So this was a little bit last minute, but I figured it's summer, and um, I was planning on doing like some, you know, I we graduated, you know, I got time. I figured, you know, I kind of work want to work on my own filmmaking projects, and I feel like this one uh, movie, these two movies actually, it's a double feature. Um, I think show like a genuine like real love and appreciation for like the craft of filmmaking that uh, and yeah, I just wanted to share that. Uh, it's One Cut of the Dead and Who Killed Captain Alex. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Okay, so I was thinking you guys see One Cut of the Dead on your own. Um, I think it's best to go into that movie completely blind. And uh, just remember, um, uh, stay beyond the credits because like it, it kind of starts off with like a 30-minute thing and then there's credits that roll and there's more stuff after it. Who killed Captain Alex, though? I think it'd be fun to see together like as a group. So I have the DVD. Oh, or perfect. So we can I do, go yeah. To, we can go to Lugia's place. All right, so uh, remember, um, remember you asked what my favorite episode is? Yeah, I think we have a new contender. This one, this one. Okay. Yeah. Like well, we, like we talked listen, about the movie, Patrick, but we also got more into what? We didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about the movie, but, though. I know, but it was we like spent like retro- a half hour. That's not that the, bad. The retrospect was like was great, and all right. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I I really like this one. It, it felt a bit more personally connected. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, and a good movie just, on top of it. So I have a yeah. I've I've just uh one one more two more things to talk about. Uh, my recommendation. Okay, so um, One Cut of the Dead is basically a movie about like underdog filmmakers, and um, Who Killed Captain Alex, is just like the movie made by underdog filmmakers. So. I, that's kind of why, like, I figured it'd be an interesting double feature because you got one movie that's about the process, and then one movie which is about, you know, where you actually just see the and and the product. And I feel like, um, a lot of people they kind of like make fun of who killed Captain Alex, but I think that you know there's a lot to appreciate. And so, 
And I think uh, One Cut of the Dead is, like, a good example of that, because um, I won't spoil, like, why I think, like, One Cut of the Dead is such a compelling film, but um, let's just say I kind of hate half of it, and the other half I love, and the other half that I love makes me love the half that I hate, so. Okay. Interesting relationship. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd recommend uh, watch One Cut of the Dead first, Going Blind, and... Uh, then we can like work out a day to watch who killed Captain Alex. Gotcha. I'm very uh, interested yeah. to hear your thoughts on that, Patrick. Which who killed Captain Alex? Who killed Captain Alex? All right. <laughs> oh jeez, I'm looking at the, the audience rating on Google. It's all five point zero. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's generally like a uh, a great film. Like it's all a right. lot of fun. Which right, one? So... Who killed Captain Which, Alex? What do you mean? Which one? <laughs> oh, I know no, they I've made a sequel. Kind of the I'm dead. talking about the original. I know they made a sequel to Who Killed Captain Alex, but I'm talking about the original. From 2010. Yep. Okay. Apparently, the budget was eighty-five dollars. I thought it was two hundred. Eighty-five. Do- I think the sequel was two hundred. If that doesn't say anything, I don't know what will. I can't wait uh, for uh, Lugia to be introduced to the... No, not Lugia. Patrick to be introduced to the concept of a video joker. Oh. Video joker? All right, well, we'll explain when we see the movie. Let's not get uh-huh. Let's not get into it. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. I'll wait, I'll wait. All right, so uh, you want to wrap it up? All right, three words. Love you, wife. But you're not married! <laughs>